Hello, my name is Aviva, and today I have some adult contemporary romance standalone recommendations to share with you guys. So just in case you haven't seen my latest three videos, I'm going to be repeating myself and telling you guys that over the past couple of months, I've been reading a lot of romances and I basically had a lot of recommendations I wanted to share with you guys. The only problem is, is I had too many. So I've decided to split up all of my standalone romance recommendations into four parts. I've already put out three videos. I put out a YA recommendation, a new adult slash steamy recommendation, and then a part one to all of my adult contemporary romance recommendations. So today I'm doing a part two to all of my adult contemporary romances and basically I'll be talking about the last little bit of books that I basically think you should read if you're looking to read some really good romances. All of these books are catered towards the adult like sort of age group and for the most part these aren't like known to be very steamy. They might have like you know an explicit scene or two. They might be a little bit of like a fade to black situation each book is basically different and for the most part these are just overall really good cute contemporary romances and happens to be this stack specifically is all workplace environment I didn't really do it on purpose I just had so many adult romances to share with you guys that I kind of split it up in that sort of way so this stack is all of the ones that just happen to take place in the workplace environment and the other stack that I did which is all in the part one happens to be like random things taking place not in the workplace so um, let's just get into the books. First up, I have The Hating Game by Sally Thorne. So this is maybe like the ultimate enemies to lovers workplace environment book you're ever going to get recommended. This is basically following like a grumpy sunshine situation. This guy is like a real grump and this girl is like really sunshiny and they basically work together. They're both personal assistants for the owners of this company and happens to be their desks are facing each other. So they're always like looking at each other and kind of like messing with each other. And they have this whole like game going on where they just like mess around with each other, stuff like that. It's very like angsty, very witty things like that sort of thing and obviously they don't get along and then the story kind of goes where it's like they get this opportunity that one of them is going to get a promotion and is going to end up being like you know the boss of the other person and since they so much don't get along they really can't handle that so they kind of like up their game of this whole hating game thing that they play and obviously like a romance is somehow going to bloom from all of this like hate ink sort of thing going on between the two of them so it's just a really fun read if you're into enemies lovers if you're into grumpy sunshine and you like reading books that take place in a workplace environment, then you should 100% check out this book because I don't think it's going to disappoint you. Next up, I have The Spanish Love Deception by Elena Armas. So this book happens to be very similar to The Hating Game. I read The Hating Game first and I thought that that book was like going to be one of my favorites from this year. And then I read this book and it's basically like The Hating Game on crack. Like if you ever read The Unhoneymooners by Christina Lauren and you've read The Hating Game and you were a fan of both of those, this is basically its baby. It's kind of got like all the amazing elements elements from those two books like mixed together into the Spanish love deception. So if you're not familiar with this book, this is another enemies to lovers workplace environment book, but it also has like a fake dating scenario and a vacation slash a wedding scenario going on. You're basically following this girl. She works in this office and she basically told her family that she's coming home to Spain at the end of the month and bringing home a boyfriend for her sister's wedding. So she lives in like New York or Chicago, something like that. She's got to go all the way to Spain and somehow bring a boyfriend that doesn't exist and happens to be the guy that she doesn't really get along with in the office kind of overhears her complaining to another one of her you know co-workers about this and he's like you can take me I'll be your fake date slash pretend to be your boyfriend sort of thing and she's like what the hell are you talking about we don't get along why would you offer that to me like why would you want to come all the way to Spain to my sister's wedding and pretend to be my boyfriend you don't even like me so that's kind of like the beginning of the story and throughout the first half of the book you're kind of following that as he's trying to convince her that she has no other option other than to take him to her sister's wedding and like you don't really understand why he wants to do that and so they kind of like strike up a deal and like you know things go from there and then the second half of the book you get to go to Spain and you know be at the wedding be at the wedding party and like you know you kind of get that aspect of it so it kind of has a good mix of both workplace environment and like vacation Spain wedding sort of thing and then you have the enemies to lovers and the fake dating and the grumpy 
sunshine sort of thing a little bit and basically it's got some amazing tropes amazing situations that people really love in books all wrapped into one so if all of that sounds amazing to you I don't think you'll be disappointed by this one next up I have 10 rules for faking it by Sophie Sullivan so I absolutely loved this book I read it all the way at the beginning of the year and 130 books later it's still one of my like top tier favorites from the year so far so this is a dual perspective romance you're basically following this girl and right at the beginning of the book she walks into her boyfriend having sex with someone else and it happens to be it's on her birthday so she freaks out she runs to work she works at this like podcast radio station sort of place and she kind of like barges into her best friend's office who like you know happens to work there too and she's like oh my god this is what happened to me it's my birthday it's not going so well blah 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 and then happens to be the girl was on air and everybody who was listening into her radio station basically heard how her morning was going and it's very embarrassing and she ends up getting like called into like her boss's office and like you know she never really thought that like he liked her because he's very like professional with her but he's very like you know nice to everybody else in the office so she always thought it was like you know he just didn't really like her and she's very nervous and then he ends up as like being like oh I'm really sorry about what happened but we kind of have to spin this so we're gonna do this like bachelorette sort of thing we're gonna set you up with a bunch of guys and we're gonna make a whole podcast around it. you're gonna go on dates it's all gonna be sponsored by the radio station and you know we'll have security so nothing's gonna be scary or anything and you're kind of just gonna come onto the podcast and tell us how it went and then you're gonna like wean out all the people you didn't like and hopefully you'll find a boyfriend by the end of this and she's like you know what why not I really want to find somebody you know like also like I don't want to get fired so basically let's just do it so then they end up spending a lot of time together her and her boss setting this thing up because like for whatever reason they have to like do this together and you know they're gonna start picking guys and then you know things are gonna happen I don't really want to go any further than there but basically she's gonna obviously have a romance with someone so it's gonna be good I don't want to give away any spoilers but it's gonna be amazing and I definitely recommend reading it next up I have the honey don't list by Christina Lauren so I have mentioned Christina Lauren before in my part one video I had a lot of their recommendations they're a duo author they basically are two women I'm pretty sure they're just like best friends and they just like write the books together I don't know how they do it but however they do it it seems to work because I literally love every single one of the books that I've ever read by them I think I've read like six or seven of them and I'm pretty sure all of them besides like one or two of them have made it into this you know stack of standalone recommendation videos so take my word for it that they're amazing this book is basically about this girl and she's been working for this couple for a really long time she kind of started working for them when they just owned this like small furniture store and it's 10 years later and she's still like you know the personal assistant to them and they're now like really famous they're like a famous couple they have like this home renovation show they have interior designer sort of things they have furniture they're basically like you know just up and famous and whatever and they're basically about to go on this like book tour for like a relationship book that they just wrote the problem is is that they're actually like secretly having a horrible relationship like they're both like cheating on each other and they're really unhappy and like everybody in their circle knows this but the world doesn't know it so she is kind of forced to go on their like book tour with them to make sure that like nobody finds out that they're actually not getting along because they can't really sell a like relationship book if like people know that they're having a horrible relationship and basically she's technically the assistant to the girl and then the husband has um another assistant and like there's a whole thing going on with him but basically a romance is eventually going to bloom between like you know the both assistants and like they don't really get along so well but like it's a whole thing I'm not really going to get into it it doesn't matter but basically what this book is so amazing for is besides for the storyline which I have to thought was really fun I really liked the aspect of seeing the two assistants relationship grow while the like person that they're trying to keep together like the famous couple relationship is falling apart so it had like a very interesting dynamic and I really thought this was just like a very unique story I really liked seeing like you know both type of relationships like one going downhill and one like going uphill sort of thing so it was a fun time it's a really small book I recommend reading it I mean I recommend reading all of them but this one was a really good one next up I have the soulmate equation by Christina Lauren so first of all this is the only other book that I'm mentioning by this author for this video all of their other recommendations that I wanted to share with you is in the part one to this series so I'm gonna make sure that that video is linked down below in case you wanted to see all the other books that I recommend reading by Christina Lauren but either way this book is basically about this like matchmaking DNA test sort of thing this guy he came up with this idea that you can use DNA to like find your soulmate and he's making like this whole like matchmaking 
doing business like around it sort of thing and anyway this girl somehow gets involved with like giving in her DNA for this like matchmaking thing and she basically happens to get set up with the owner of this company and like they kind of have like a 98% match but they already know each other and they don't really like get along very well and they don't think that like they're really going to be soulmates so she doesn't want to do it but happens to be this is like the highest rating that like this company has gotten and they're still in like you know the beginning stages of their company and it would be really good for publicity if they can like see that these two people are soulmates so the company decides that they are going to basically hire her to date the owner which she already knows and doesn't get along with because she kind of needs the money and it's the only way that she's kind of gonna agree to it so for whatever reason she's going to say yes she's gonna take the money she's gonna start dating and we're gonna follow the story if they're gonna end up being soulmates or not so it kind of is much better than I'm explaining it to be I had a great time reading this book I first of all thought that I wasn't going to like it so much I didn't know how I was gonna feel about like the matchmaking DNA sciencey thing about it like I wasn't so sure about it but at the end of the day it's a Christina Lauren book they really know how to write a good story they just pull you in they make you not realize that you're reading you just want to keep turning the page it's gonna put a smile on your face I seriously I couldn't recommend it more I had a great time reading this and if it sounds anywhere near up your alley I say give it a shot Next up, I have Me You in the Middle by Devin Daniels. So this was actually such a random find for me. I randomly saw this in Target. I seriously don't know why I picked it up, but thank God I did because, oh my God, I absolutely loved this book. So I first didn't think I was going to love it because it was like a political book and I'm not such a fan of like reading things about politics. I just like, I like staying away from that. But I saw that this book was like an enemies to lovers workplace environment sort of thing. And I'm like, you know what? Let me give it a shot. It's also like the first book by this author and and I, you know, you always want to give like, you know, first author book sort of things like a shot because, you know, you're supporting the author and it's going to be good. And if it really is good, then you found a new amazing author that you can start following sort of thing. You know, anyway, basically I read it and I absolutely loved it. This is an enemies to lovers book in a workplace environment. You're basically following this girl who is a Democrat and this guy who is a Republican and they work. I'm pretty sure in like the Senate's office or something. They're both like working under different senators. And the book starts out where they have to like have a meeting for some reason reason they have to try to convince each other on something and their meeting doesn't really go well they really don't get along right from the beginning and the story kind of like you know shoots off from there where it's like they kind of start this like office banter sort of thing they start messing with each other they really don't get along and they're kind of being like sometimes mean to each other sometimes just like you know playing pranks on each other sort of thing and anyway you kind of get to follow like the storyline of them turning from enemies and then slowly turning into friends and then slowly turning into lovers it has like a really good pacing for their relationship which I really appreciated sometimes you get like enemies and then all of a sudden they're lovers and that's too quick for me and I really liked the pacing of this book I thought it was laid out really well I really liked seeing like you know how the relationship like you know moved forward and all that sort of stuff you kind of get like the best of all worlds because you got to see when they really didn't get along all of the banter all of the angst building up that sort of thing and then they turned into like you know friend enemies sort of thing where it's like I still don't agree with your political situation but I really like hanging out with you so we're gonna be friends and then slowly it turns into lovers and it just it gets really good so basically read this book I'm telling you if you're like hesitant to read this because of like the political aspect of it I'm telling you it couldn't be this good without the politicalness of it the fact that they were on like opposite sides of like you know the political spectrum made like all of the angst and all the tension and all the enemies sort of thing just work so well and I usually sometimes get bothered by it and I really wasn't bothered by the political aspect I absolutely loved this book. It was an easy five stars. I didn't want to put it down. And I'm telling you, read it or else you're missing out. And the last book I wanted to share with you guys is Saves to Love Me by Kay Tucker. So this is actually a dual timeline story, which I usually am not a fan of. And it did take me a while to get into it because I'm not the biggest fan of dual timelines. But once I got into it, I absolutely loved this book. And I'm pretty sure I gave it a five stars, if not a four stars. And I very highly recommend it. You're basically following two storylines. So one storyline is you're seeing these two people as they are in like summer camp they're you know just regular kids in summer camp and you kind of get to follow their like love story of falling in love over one summer and then at the end of that summer something happens and they basically never talk again and you're trying to find out while reading like that part of the story of like what the hell happened that made them never talk from the day they left summer camp even though they were like madly in love sort of thing and then you're following like the other storyline which is like I don't know they're adults now like real adults like 25 maybe 30 somewhere like that I don't even remember and anyway this girl she's always been really wealthy and now she's working for her father in one 
of his buildings. I don't remember what she does, but it doesn't really matter. But either way, she kind of like goes downstairs one day and finds the guy that she fell in love with in summer camp as the security guard in the building that her father owns and where she works. And she's like, oh my God, do you remember me? Like, I can't believe you're here. And he's like, who are you? And she's like, oh my God, like, how could you not remember me sort of thing? And then you're kind of like following the story where she's trying to like get him to admit that he remembers who she is. And like, you kind of get to follow like their love story, like in present day, but then also you're slowly finding out more and more about their past and like, you know, the love story that they went through in summer camp. And then also like what happened all that time ago that made them like never talk again. So it's got a lot of layers to it. It was a really fun time. I really liked like all aspects of this story. My least favorite thing about it was the dual timeline thing, but that's just because I'm not the hugest fan of that in general, but yet I still love this book. So that is saying something. So if you are a fan of dual timelines, or even if you're not the hugest fan, but you really like the storyline, I definitely recommend reading this book. Anyway, that is all the books that I wanted to share with you guys. So this is finally my wrap up of all of these standalone romance recommendations that I wanted to share with you guys. I can't believe I finished this. I've been doing this for so long, just telling you amazing romance after amazing romance. So I'm curious to know if you got any good recommendations from this stack of books or from any of my other videos, or if you've read any of the books I mentioned and what you thought about them. I love hearing your thoughts on the books that I'm talking about. So leave me a comment down below. But either way, just so you know, I will be doing another like romance recommendation in the future of all like companion series that I recommend but I'm not there yet but it is going to be coming so if you wanted to see that video because I have some amazing recommendations to share with you guys like companion series wise then make sure you subscribe to my channel so that you get notified when that comes out but either way if you like this video make sure to give it a thumbs up and like always thank you so much for watching this video I really appreciate it and until next time enjoy reading